What if I was to tell you that at this very moment you are living in a simulation and that movies like The Matrix and The 13th Floor are actually not that far off of the truth? Now, that doesn't mean I'm saying we have robotic overlords that have us plugged into these pods that go on for miles and miles and miles and feed off of our energy in that way or something like that. But what I am saying is that actually the most cutting edge science available to us today actually shows that we could actually be living in a very complex and sophisticated simulation. And this is not just conjecture anymore. There is hard evidence and data to back up this theory. And it is also backed up by most people's experiences. And we will explore this um, with some of the data in this video. Now let's say that it is true that you're living in a simulation, which I am suggesting that it is. Well, that's great. But what good is that to you? What practical value does that have? Well, what if I was also to tell you that there are ways in which you can influence the simulation to influence your reality so that you're living more of the life you want to be living, that you can actually influence it in ways that change the events in your life, the people that come into your life, create more opportunities in your life, if you just follow a pretty simple system. If what we are living in is similar to say a computer program, what if you could code, quote unquote, certain cheat codes into the game? What if you could learn the rule set and know how to have the computer, quote unquote, produce certain things that you want in the game for you. Well, guess what? You absolutely can do this when you become aware first and foremost that you're living in a simulation and then you learn the rules to that simulation. And so in this video, we're going to look at how it is and why it is that we actually live in a simulation, a very sophisticated, complex simulation, mind you. We are going to learn the rules, the real rules to this game and this simulation, and most important, how you can actually use these rules and these new things that you're doing to plug in cheat codes into the game to the point where you're doing things in your life where people come up to you and ask, how the heck are you doing that? Essentially, you're going to be able to mold, influence, and create your reality in extremely powerful ways. So let's first start with why it is we now know that the most likely scenario is that we are living in a simulation, how that works, and then we'll take it from there. So the first thing we need to look at is Newtonian paradigm versus this kind of simulation hypothesis or this, this theory that we're living more in a computerized simulation or close to or similar to that kind of reality. Now, the Newtonian paradigm basically states that everything is materialistic, that we are living in this very materialistic universe, that basically, you know, that is base reality. Newtonian physics, basically everything involved within the realm of Newtonian physics is all there is. Is, and anything that falls outside of that is just gobbledygook. It's not real. It's just fantasy. It's woo woo. And that stuff doesn't really exist. There might be some anomalies, but ultimately that doesn't exist. Whereas the simulation of theory or hypothesis says something very, very different that we're going to get into in just a moment. And I'm going to give you some analogies so you can relate to this um, and know how to operate within it. Now, the first thing we need to look at when it comes to which one we live in, is it really just a physical reality with basically nothing else, or is there something more? Is we can look at something that most scientists and researchers have agreed happened at a very long time in the past, which was the Big Bang. However, the Big Bang from a materialistic point of view, from a Newtonian paradigm, is incredibly hard to explain because the Big Bang is stated as being something that essentially came from nothing. And basically that everything is, that is in the known universe came from this state of nothingness into everything. And it's kind of like that famous quote, you know, materialism wants you to give them one miracle and then claim that there are no other miracles, right? That one miracle being that everything came from nothing. Um, and then it's like, just give us that and then the rest we can explain. However, if you look at this idea of the universe instead being virtual, more like a computer, it actually makes complete sense, this idea of a Big Bang, and actually fits that theory. Whereas in, again, Newtonian physics, it doesn't really fit materialism, this kind of nothing coming, or, or everything coming out of nothing. It doesn't fit that theory, but completely meshes and aligns to the theory of the virtual reality. This is because if you were to start, say, a game like The Sims Up, it's starting from a zero state or what's called a zero state. And then you start up the game and an information influx from a zero state 
um, as you boot up the game, which then provides all the data and everything for what's going to be in the game. So if you start a game up from the perspective of the game coming from a zero state, it's almost as if a big bang is occurring every time you boot it up from that zero state. And I'm not gonna be the best person to be able to explain exactly how that works, but you can find many different physicists and others who explain this in a lot more detail on how this works. From the materialist view that our universe is all there is, as an objective, independent reality, the fact that the Big Bang came from nothing is very hard to explain. How could everything come from nothing? But if you look at the universe as a virtual construct, the Big Bang model works perfectly. Virtual worlds always begin with an information influx from a zero state, since they need to initially boot up. Every time a computer game starts up, a Big Bang occurs from the perspective of the game. From inside the virtual world itself, the creation always comes from nothing, because before it boots up, there is no space or time as defined by the rules of that virtual world. Ultimately, the simulation hypothesis is the one that lines up much more accurately, in fact, the only one that really lines up accurately as far as what all of this is, what reality is, when it comes to this idea of the Big Bang, which again, pretty much every scientist and researchers agree is something that happened in the way distant past. While materialism really falls flat when it tries to explain how it can exist as base reality with a Big Bang. In fact, something that is incredibly interesting is physicist James Gates has actually found computer code in our world when digging deep enough. So I'm actually gonna play a clip where he's explaining this just a little bit or just kind of his discovery. Uh, and I believe he's uh, speaking to Neil deGrasse Tyson about this. And uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you can kind of tell, is like kind of almost blown away by it. Um, but essentially that they found computer code, the deeper you go, the more you dig into what our reality is made up of, they literally found computer code. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos? Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. So, so are you saying we are all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe and we're just expressions of their code? And perhaps this really sounds bizarre whenever you've heard this idea that we're in a simulation or like the equivalent of a computer game. Wouldn't I know that I'm in the game? Wouldn't it be obvious to me that I'm in a simulation? But you have to also understand that this is an incredibly complex uh, simulation, an incredibly complex game. It's not really um, something we can relate to the simulations, even the more advanced ones that we have uh, that we've created here. But however, I will play a clip from what's called the simulation hypothesis, which is something I highly recommend to go watch if this resonates with you and you want to learn a lot more of the science and data behind it because this might give you a little bit of an explanation of how this works so i'll play that clip now if i were a character in a computer game that were so advanced that i were actually conscious and i started exploring my video game world it would actually feel to me like it was made of real solid objects made of physical stuff Yet, if I started studying, as the curious physicist that I am, the properties of this stuff, the equations by which things move, and the equations that, that give the, the stuff its properties, I would discover eventually that all these properties were, were mathematical. The mathematical properties that the programmer had actually put into the software that describes everything. The server that's creating you is not in your reality frame. It's outside. If your sims that computer is non-physical to you. What's physical to you is, is your Sims world.
Now, another great analogy um, to break it down even more that kind of shows how this actually works and how basically the virtual reality and the physical reality act with each other and what their place in all of this is, is what we just call the computer game analogy. Now, you have to understand that the computer game analogy goes like this, that the computer game is actually a subset of a superset. And so that's just to say, let's say you play Sims. Sims is a game that you can actually boot up but only use via a computer, right? So the computer is actually what we call the superset. The game is the subset. It is within the rule set of the computer, so to speak. So the game actually represents Newtonian paradigm, uh, physical matter reality, and it is something that comes from something much larger, which in this case we can call the computer or the superset. Now, when it comes to our virtual reality or our game that we perceive as our physical everyday lives, the subset that that is, is actually coming from the superset, which we're just labeling again as the computer, the greater computer system. Some of us call it the field, um, source, but we actually can label it as consciousness. And so this physical reality has actually become born out of consciousness. And so consciousness is primary, and then this physical matter reality is simply a subset coming from that consciousness. Now stick with me here. So physical reality is the subset. You have the computer that is the superset, and this is kind of the grander scheme of things as a source of the field. And one way you can also look at it is consciousness is the one that's actually moving the joystick. If we look at it with another analogy, say World of Warcraft, the character on screen is the elf, but the player is the one actually moving the elf. But from the perspective of the elf, everything in that world seems real. The people that they interact with, the battles that they get in, the growth that they go through while they go through the game, all of that seems like the real thing, like what they are. But we know as we're watching that happen that the elf on screen isn't the true player. The true player is the one holding the joystick, making the decisions from off the screen, yet it's creating these certain events on screen. And one of the crucial ways in which we can influence our reality is to understand that the subset, the game, is actually coming from the superset. And so if we take our attention off the character, the elf on screen, which is just this physical reality, me moving around in just this physical body, and we put it more on the player, our consciousness, uh, we can also call this our higher self. We can call this putting our attention on source. Again, we can call whatever we want to call it. But when we start taking our attention off the elf or the character and start putting more on the player, that's ultimately you know, handling the joystick that's creating the actions of the character on screen or creating a lot of what's on the screen, then we start to have a little more influence over our lives and what actually shows up on screen. So this is where things get interesting, right? I want to go over some of the rules of this so-called simulation that you are a part of. Because we all know the physical rules to our physical reality. And these rules are also very fine-tuned. But like we've mentioned, they are a subset of much greater rules, of much greater principles that determine you know, what we're allowed to do in this game, essentially. And so there are rules that are predominant over the rules of Newtonian physics. There are rules that go beyond it. Essentially, many of these rules can be worked around if we know to take our attention off the physical reality, off the elf character, and move it more onto the player behind the scenes. It's like being the person who's off the film set versus just the character who's on the film set. When we come off the film set, we can maybe arrange the things on set a little bit differently. We can maybe influence the script so different things are written into it. But when we're the character acting out the script that's playing in our lives or the things on set are already arranged in a certain way, it can seem like that's just what it is until we realize we can step off set and influence things from a different perspective. Remember, this non-physical, which is the computer, is allowing the physical, the game, to be able to exist at all. And so we can learn to plug cheat codes from the computer into the game. So again, in the physical reality, there are very linear rules. This is where Newtonian physics is very useful and has been very useful and has helped us to really start mastering this physical game. But it's also caused us to believe it's the only game and that there's nothing beyond it, which has caused a lot of suffering and headache and frustration because we're not tuning into the greater game that's at large we can use to influence Newtonian game. And the Newtonian game, although it operates on very linear rule sets, the non-physical 
operates in very non-linear rule sets, or at least from our perspective it does. We actually live in a very non-linear reality. Things do not typically happen on an A to B to C to D level. They usually happen in a much different way. So you can definitely continue to play from the linear model of Newtonian physics and play in that way. And it's a very limited way to play. Or you can learn how to play from the non-physical perspective, how to play from the thing that's actually creating the game in the first place, how to influence that, and then open yourself up to so many more possibilities. So let's talk about a way in which you can start to play with these new rules and to take your attention off the rules of just the physical. Because again, if you keep giving your attention just to the physical, you're just gonna keep trying to play by that linear rule set. Now, can you get things done by doing that? Yes. Can you do certain things just within the physical, disregarding the rest? Absolutely. But it's gonna be slower. It's gonna be more of a struggle. It's gonna come with more frustration. There's always gonna be something in you that thinks there's something more to it because it's able to connect to the non-physical even if you're not putting your attention on it. And so it's a much harder way in which to play the game and it's guaranteed to come with again frustration and burnout and overwhelm. But you can also do something where you attach more to the non-physical and allow the physical then to be influenced from that point. And so what I want to give you right now is what we call the Lego factory analogy. And this is an idea we dive into deeply with our clients that go through our reality creation program. Uh, where we get them to essentially learn how to live in this simulation as like a master creator, how to absolutely influence it in their everyday lives in ways that they actually want, which is something you're able to do once you learn the rules to this game and you practice playing it, which we show them how to do. I'm gonna give you this analogy that we dive deep in with them. And this is simply called the Lego factory analogy. So imagine that in your physical world, Everything is like a Lego brick. It's, a, it's physical stuff, right? So you have all these Lego bricks in your world. All the physical stuff in your life is a Lego brick. And all of these Lego bricks come from the Lego factory. Now, the Lego bricks in your life represent the physical. The Lego factory represents the non-physical. And so the way most people try and change their lives or interact with reality is they if they want something, they start complaining about the Lego bricks already in their life, or they start trying to change those Lego bricks into something they're not. But once these Lego bricks come into your physical world, from the non-physical into the physical, they're here, they're not going anywhere, right? They're already physical stuff. But instead of trying to, again, be the character or elf kind of moving around with these Lego bricks, and again, you can get some things done by doing that, um, or trying to change them into something they're not, you know, something else you want, what if we were able to go into the Lego factory itself and request new things? What if instead of resisting what's already here, the current Lego bricks and fighting against them, what if we could, again, just go like into the back door of the Lego factory, go up to one of the workers and request a new mold to be created in the Lego factory? And then after enough time, because there is a time delay between the non-physical to the physical, because we're under those rules in the physical, but after enough time, that mold would be created, and then the Lego bricks from that mold would then start to come through. And so what we show our students is that this is absolutely possible, and then we show them how to actually do it. And ultimately, it is when you start engaging with the non-physical aspect of the simulation, of reality, when you start going into more of the computer part, when you pause the elf on screen, or you get out of the character and you go more into the player, again, that you can start encoding different things into the game. Because do you think it's any harder for the computer to put one thing in the game or another thing in the game? No, we just require a different code ultimately. And so life can bring you, again, from the non-physical into the physical, pretty much anything that you could desire. It might take, again, more time depending on what it is. And again, because we're under those rule sets of time in the physical, if you want something physically, again, you can access other things instantaneously. You want to feel joy? Guess what? You actually have access to that pretty quickly. If you want to access other states of being, for example, love, I could just tell you to think of someone you absolutely love and you can access that's that right now. Think of a pet that lights you up. Boom, you're accessing the emotion of love. But things in the physical, because they're under the Newtonian paradigm, do take a little bit of time. And so one crucial thing we want to do is to take our attention off the current physical circumstances and keep them attuned instead to our vision. So we put our attention on the vision, which is like going into the Lego factory, essentially handing that over to the workers, and they go, okay, 
we'll make those molds. It's going to take some time, but we'll make those molds. Again, time for it to come into physical and to stop getting hooked into whatever the circumstances are. Why? Because when you get hooked into the circumstances in the physical reality, which again comes from the non-physical and you're making that more real than the non-physical, you're giving more attention to these things and simply recreating those things over and over and over again. Because now you're thinking about those things, the Lego factory is getting your order is you want more of these molds and we'll give you more of the same. But if you instead give more attention to what it is you want in your life, to your vision, you give more attention to the things that you love, you're more grateful, I'm sure you've heard about that. You're appreciative, which makes you appreciate what you appreciate appreciates. Then suddenly you'll start getting different Lego bricks coming out of the factory because the computer is now putting different things in the game. So if you want to change your physical circumstances to something differently, you have to stop putting attention on the physical circumstances. And not in the sense of like you don't go about your day or whatever, but stop complaining about things that are in your physical. Because by giving your attention to it, you it's, it's like you're going into the factory all Although at this point unconscious, handing over more blueprints of what you don't want, and they're like, okay, if you insist, giving you more of the same. If you go in, however, with your attention more on your vision, if you go in more with your attention on the levels of emotions you want to experience the equivalent of physically, then you're going to start getting different Lego bricks. Again, because this reality, physical reality, is subject to influence. What is your influence? It's your attention and it's your intention. Meaning your attention, what are you putting your attention on mainly in the physical? Intention, what are you putting your intention from an inner place on as well? If you continue to put your intention on things that you don't want, your attention on things that you don't want, and usually these play together, you will continue to produce things that you don't want. More of those same Lego bricks, which is just more of the same physical stuff, will start to come into your world. A great example of this, have you ever had a certain person in your life that you just really didn't like and you kept resisting them and you're like, you know what, I gotta get away from this person. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna leave this job or whatever else it is. And then you get to the next job or the next place and on cue, there is the exact same person just in a different body waiting for you. Yes, this happens all the time to people in relationships. This happens all the time to people when they switch jobs. This happened to me many, many times. It happened four or five times that in different environments, I kept getting the same type of person. Why? Because I wasn't taking my attention off it. I wasn't focusing on the kind of person I wanted in my life. I kept complaining about the kind of person that was there. And so no matter where I went, I kept recreating and having this Lego brick come into my life, so to speak. So before I jump into some more tools of a practical nature that you can use in order to, again, influence your reality, influence the simulation so you're getting more of what you want, if you are looking to do this at a high level and you don't want trial and error, you don't want to guess with this anymore, and you're ready for just, again, that next level where you're absolutely going to change your life through this material, we have a program called EMF that you can learn more about down below where you can go check out more about it, how it works, the results people have gotten. Again, this is for someone who's very serious and committed to doing this, is ready to invest, all of that kind of stuff, but is also, again, really ready for change and transformation in their life. Not little stuff, but like a whole new lifestyle. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you're tired of not getting those changes, you kind of want to get off YouTube University a little bit and actually get, you know, accountability, someone to really show you the way, do it with a group of people who are all heading in the same direction um, and really, really get that going this year, then you can check that out down below. All right, so what are some other things that you can do to essentially influence the simulation to bring things into your physical life? Because all of this is great. And whether you believe me or not isn't my concern. Some of you will, some of you won't. But even if you do, we need to make this to something that actually helps you, right? We need to make it so that you're actually now utilizing these new things and getting results. Because it's great to have the information and feel good about it, but if it's not helping your life, if you're not you know, able to bring into your simulation, into your reality, the people you wanna bring in, the finances you wanna bring in, the vocation you wanna bring in, the relationships you wanna bring in, and you're not actively moving towards that or having those come in, then it's kind of useless, right? Because knowing and not doing um, is the same as not knowing, right? Applied knowledge is power. We want results here. We ultimately want usefulness. So how do we do that? The first thing like I already mentioned is understanding and really, really remembering that the superset is what bears or the subset is born out of. And that means that the 
Physical is born out of the non-physical. So giving more attention to the non-physical, giving more attention and intention to the Lego factory. You know, I talk about the spiritual, mental, and physical planes. Basically, the spiritual and mental planes of existence are what bring about basically all of the things that come into the physical, the opportunities, the, the events, the people, and everything. And so if you're not spending that much time on your spiritual and mental hygiene, really monitoring your thoughts and thinking more of what you do want, really helping yourself get into the feelings and energy you want to be in, then it's gonna be damn near impossible to influence your reality. And so putting more attention on those things goes a long way. Again, doing the shadow work, really engaging in visualization techniques and meditations, being in good energy as often as you can, thinking and monitoring your thoughts throughout the day, getting in environments that are conducive for those two things being good. Again, if you're hanging out in environments that make you feel like crap, you might wanna not be in those environments to the best you can. If you can't help it, try and spruce up your environment the best you can to influence you in positive ways. But just keep in mind, it is an absolute fact and law that the subset of the physical reality is influenced or comes from actually the superset, which is non-physical reality. And so if you're not putting your attention on the non-physical aspect of yourself, you're not gonna change your physical. And the thing is, when we're never taking that time to tune into the non-physical, we get more hooked into the physical, thinking we are the character on screen, the elf, right? We think that's all we are and forget that we are something beyond that that also has influence in the non-physical. And so the more you tune into that non-physical, the more you actually start to connect and remember the power you have, the power of your intention, attention, the influence you have in your life, the things you'll discover as you put your attention there more also will start to blow you away. But if you don't do that regularly, you're going to get hooked more into just the physical game and then be taken for a loop and be sleeping awake and then wake up a year later wondering, oh crap, whoops, what was I doing there? So really start to give more than you have been attention on that non-physical. Now you'll find that when doing this, more opportunities will start appearing in the physical. These two are tied. Again, superset, supplies the subset, it gives, a subset is born out of the superset. So if you start doing certain things in the superset, it will create certain effects in the subset in the form of opportunities, people, opportunities to learn certain lessons that will be valuable for you moving forward, opportunities for you know being able to move to a different place if that's what you desire, getting out of situations that no longer serve you, opportunities to make more money doing things that you love, opportunities for relationships, all of these different things, then you have to make sure you do take the action, right? You are on the physical. The physical is still a thing that you operate in. It's not to be dismissed. It's just to start understanding that it is not the base reality and that something else is actually producing what's here in the physical and the nature of this reality is like a simulation. And when you learn those rules to the game, you can start operating on all these planes of existences in harmony rather than in conflict or in a way where it's out of balance. And so that is to say, when something does come in to the screen of your life, so into the physical reality, and it's an opportunity, if you don't do anything towards it, it will pass you by, right? So if you just go into the spiritual and mental as well, and to the non-physical, and just do all that, but then don't take the opportunity, it still will keep passing you by, right? So grab that opportunity when it comes in, when it resonates, make sure you are taking the actions but if you're not doing that non-physical stuff, you'll just be throwing stuff against the wall, hoping it sticks. Um, you'll be doing things you don't want to be doing, etc. Again, have more faith in your vision than the current physical circumstances. The current physical circumstances will try to get you hooked and try to get you to forget that life is mainly non-physical and that this is all kind of a video game simulation virtual reality. But when you have more faith in the vision than the current physical circumstances, it reminds you of your power, your influence, that you are mainly non-physical and then you can start to influence the physical once again. Now, if you want even more depth when it comes to understanding how the outer world is influenced by what we call the inner world or how the physical is influenced by the non-physical, I would check out this video here where I go over something called the mirror principle that dives even more into this. This level of understanding is going to help you so much with what we talked about in this video, so I'd go check that out next.